Hi, and welcome to the Ramonda Show. I've asked the ladies to turn up the AC in here because my next guest, OMG, if I could say that, is none other than the actor, Mr. Andreas Rivera. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you very much for having me. I know that there may be some guests that are watching today that don't really know much about you. So if you can give like a brief introduction of who you are and you know your status in the movie industry at this time. Sure, definitely. Um, new to acting, roughly about two years. I uh, got into acting two years ago uh, from, actually I took my younger daughter out to meet the actors from the TV show Supernatural mm -hmm. to meet uh, Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles, and that's kind of triggered the bug for me to actually do acting and to go out there. And so the next week I went out and did my very first audition. Uh, so and there for me, just started building, started doing shorts, feature films, commercials up in the Bay Area, uh, pilot done in LA. And then finally, after about a year, I took acting lessons. You know, so it's kind of, I did it the wrong way. You know, <laughs> most people do acting lessons and then they, um, start pursuing acting career. So um, I spent 10 years in the military, uh, originally born in Bronx, New York. New York. Yeah, New York's <laughs> in the house, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, I had to come all the way to California to start to get into the acting industry, mm -hmm. right? But uh, um, so, and then right now I'm working on a couple of feature films and one that I co-wrote, as well as uh, the ones that have come out so far, The Shop. Mm -hmm. Michael Cunningham uh, wrote that, directed that. And then I have another one called Don't Give Up the Ghost that should be coming out roughly, I'm thinking, end of summer. They're in post. So. Okay. Well, let's uh, go back a little bit. So you started acting. You took your daughter out to see some actors. And then you were just so mesmerized by that. And it, um, wanted, you, know, you wanted to pursue that dream. And how, how, was it, how hard was it to get started in acting? Was it a difficult task for you? I, well, because some people don't have the look, because you have the look, so I know it's, you probably just walked into it, oh, you got the job. You know, really simple, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I, I, I think, honestly, oh, thank you, first of all. Mm -hmm. I'm flat, I'm like blushing here. Uh, but um, actually, it's the hardest part of acting is actually making the decision that you're going to actually pursue that as a career. Mm -hmm. I think getting past that hurdle right there, and then actually having enough nerve to walk into an audition in which the very next week, I, I started searching on the internet, Craigslist, and different uh, acting sites, and found an audition, sent off a headshot, a headshot mm -hmm. of myself and a resume that had nothing on it. So, and they called me in for an audition, and you know, and I went in there. The look. And of course, gave the rock look, right? That raised <laughs> eyebrow, no boy, kidding. <laughs> no, but I nailed, I nailed mm -hmm. it, apparently. And it's just, you know, they asked me, how long have you been acting? And I said, well, a long time. <laughs> you know? And so it started from there. And that was a short student film. And then from there, it just started leading into feature films and commercials. So how has, I know you mentioned that you didn't take the classes. You took it after becoming an actor. Right. So how has that helped you in the industry, you know, going and taking the acting classes? Well, it helps with script memorization. It helps with actually preparing yourself for an audition. Mm -hmm. um, character breakdown. Try to get into the inside of the character's head so mm -hmm. you can actually be portray that person on, on film, mm -hmm. um, which is one of the hardest things to do because, I mean, you've probably seen movies where you look at the actor and go, oh, he could have done better, mm -hmm. he over, and he went over the top. And the acting classes teaches you to sharpen your tools. Okay. So do you do that? Do you watch movies and you critique it? I, I <laughs> try not to. That's the sad part of being mm -hmm. in acting is mm -hmm. that you really, I mean, I think since two years ago, I stopped actually enjoying because I'm looking at the film and trying to break it down. Oh, that actor could have done this better. They could have added these scenes or deleted these scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but it's, I think the hardest part is watching yourself on. I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so we went to the premiere of the shop talking and I just, I was in my chair hiding. Oh, my time, goodness. So. Why? You were excellent in that movie. I think you did a fantastic job. It's the same thing of critiquing yeah. other actors. I think we as actors are harder on ourselves than mm -hmm. the critics are, mm -hmm. you know, so we try to do the best and portray the character mm -hmm. and, you know, give the audience what they're looking for. Right. And so, yeah. You know, to Michael Sean Cunningham, that was an excellent movie. People came out, really showed you guys love. Yes. And um, me and my, my, the ladies of the conversation, we were there in the house and we really, really enjoyed it. And you primarily look for roles like that or have you ever, what other roles have you played? 
Uh, I played, uh, it's, it's, it's oddly enough because of my background mm -hmm. in law enforcement, four years of being a cop uh, and military, I tend to get typecast into mm -hmm. roles like that. I have several of the movies, or I play dads a lot um, or cops. You know, every <laughs> this is upcoming feature film. It's uh, it's I play a boxer, so mm -hmm. that's going to be a challenge because it's also it's physical as well as mm -hmm. uh, it's something different. Right. You know, so but normally I get typecast as a yeah. cop or army. You know. <laughs> Look, I, the last time we seen you, it was at the premiere of the shop, and since you mentioned your next role is as a boxer, can I just touch it? I'm I'm sorry. I, I I normally don't do this, but oh my God, you have really like. Are you working out what 24 hours a day or something? Uh, no, I'm, I'm. It's diet and two hours of working out a day, six mm -hmm. days a week, uh, one day of rest, and just trying to get rest in between because I do have uh, I do full time engineering uh, as well as acting. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to make the transition over to acting, but it's being diligent to going to the gym yes. and and. and paying your dues at the gym, as they call it. Yeah, you know, yeah. So. It's paying off. I'm telling you, it is, really. <laughs> thank you, thank but uh, you had mentioned, and thank you for serving, you know, that you served in the military. You want to talk about that experience? Uh, sure. Um, I served roughly 10 years in the Army. Mm -hmm. I went into the Army back in New York, born and raised in New York. Um, parents moved up towards West Point Military Academy, and that's where I got bit by the bug to join mm -hmm. the military. Um, stationed in Kentucky, Texas, Louisiana, Germany, Italy, uh, France, Czechoslovakia, Washington, wow. then went back to Texas, and then that's where I ended up getting out of the military and going to college, and then applied for a job in California, and that's what brought me to California. Nice. I'm from Texas, too. I just want you to know that. I, I seen that you went to school there. I was like, wait a yeah. minute. I know he's not from Texas, no, but yeah. No, no. It's, it's a nice, <laughs> nice state. Nice state, yeah. yeah. Bio said that you are a screenwriter. Yes. How did yes, you get started with doing that? I started back roughly about a year ago. Uh, after I started acting and you're, you're going on auditions and you're getting some of the scripts to read to see if you want to audition or what to memorize for the thing and then I wasn't feeling any of the scripts mm -hmm. they weren't screaming out to me some of the some of the roles and some of the writing was a little out there as I as I call it and it didn't have me as I call it, a lesson to learn mm -hmm. so I went home and it's kind of like the acting thing you know it's just like I said I'm gonna do it I'm just gonna start doing it and so with the writing ended up getting a final draft writing program, which is one of the professional writing programs. And I just sat down and uh, I like to pray a lot. So I, I said a prayer and I was like, okay, lead my fingers. Let's, yeah. let's, you know, let's get writing some. So within like five days, I had an entire script written. It's mm -hmm. called Never Leave a Man Behind, um, which is like 90 something pages. I wrote, it just kept going, mm -hmm. kept going, kept flowing, kept flowing. It deals with uh, PTSD, a uh, group of soldiers that have served in Iraq and Afghanistan and one of them, you know, during a mission encounters a situation that triggers his PTSD and then it's, it takes off from there. So it's called Never Leave a Man Behind. Mm -hmm. Wrote that script and then I was like, okay, well, if I can do this, then I'm going to do it again. And then it's every script that I write has a lesson to be learned. It's, I like to base a lot of my stuff off of, you know, biblical things or mm -hmm. religion or Christianity. Um, I don't categorize myself as a Christian writer. Um, it's more of a lesson to be learned, like the, the the script that I wrote called Another Fallen Star, which deals about these two football players. It deals with the prodigal son, him going through everything, you know, the falling from grace and returning back home. Mm -hmm. um, the other one, it's called A Piece of Heaven, which I co-wrote with uh, Michael Cunningham. Mm -hmm. That particular script is, again, the trials and tribulations, hitting your knees and finding faith and, to go on, to continue right. with life. It's life will throw you curveballs, and you know and you have to be able to still stand. Well, your career is definitely taking flight. You're a very blessed actor, but Thank what you. are the downsides of being an actor? You know, the downsides yeah. of being an actor. One thing that I learned uh, straight off the bat is don't take yourself too serious, mm -hmm. because this industry, you're going to hear a lot of no's before you actually hear a yes. So it's a numbers game, and you have to be grow thick skin. You cannot fast track this career field. You have to pay your dues. Mm. That means by sometimes starting off with student films, just to build a resume, going on out, on out uh, as many auditions as possible. Because bottom line, it is a numbers game. Mm. You're going to hear no, 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 yes, no, 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 yes. Okay. Um, you're not going to be right for every part. Sadly enough, 
I mean, I can play different uh, nationalities and so forth because of my look, but I can never play a, a Caucasian. Mm -hmm. So I have to realize that I can't go for those roles, um, as well as some of the other roles. And you don't take yourself serious, pursue this with a vengeance, and assure that you're doing this not for the money or for the fame, you're mm -hmm. doing it because you love it. Right. And as long as you love it, the money will come, yes. the fame will come, your big break will come. So, right. I mean, that's, you know, take your classes, get your headshots, mm -hmm. Get in the trenches and don't take yourself serious. Nice. So you guys hear that out there. So what do you do when you're not acting? What, is, what do you do to relax when you're I not do, before the camera? I uh, go to the gym. Uh, <laughs> you work out. <laughs> go to the gym. It's uh, I go to the gym because that's a good stress or mm -hmm. stress relief for me. Um, church definitely involved in church. I mm -hmm. sing on the worship team. Oh, awesome. Um, uh, involved in youth uh, ministries as church as well. And just, you know, it's just staying rooted and staying, no matter how big you make it or how quick you make it, understanding and hitting your knees and saying, you know what, thank you for where I am today, you know, and then to come back and then go out there. You know, like this, this interview when you called me, mm -hmm. I was nervous. I was trying to talk myself out of doing it. <laughs> Are you it. kidding like, me? No, I kid you not. I kid you not. <laughs> this is, acting is different than being yourself mm -hmm. and talking about yourself because mm -hmm. it's easier to fall into a, a role of a character and go, mm -hmm. okay. I can memorize these lines. Right. I can say this, and then to come in here, so okay, so tell me about yourself. And it always stumps every actor. Yeah. If you ask, if you look at them in the interviews, you can see that they're a little bit uncomfortable mm -hmm. when you're asking them. Uh, uh, <laughs> talk about a movie that I just did, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, and and I have uh, my daughter. She's 11 years old and involved in her school a lot too. She uh -huh. she goes to uh, a Christian school, mm -hmm. so and just staying humble. Yeah, and, you know, That's realizing key. where you're from. Absolutely. Perfect. I love Thank it. You. I love it. So what about your daughter? Is she interested in being an actress? No. No? no. What does she like to do? Uh, <laughs> she's more into, she's into animals. She's into mm -hmm. drawing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, definitely a lot of, she's gifted with that. She loves singing. Mm -hmm. But to put her on stage, she, all, of course, everyone gets nervous. Yeah. But, you know, walking around the house and she, I hear her singing and she's like, wow. You know, it's just because I never took any formal lessons for mm -hmm. singing as well. One day I was like, hey, I can do that. You know, mm -hmm. I, want, I, want I don't to, believe you could sing. I can't. I, can. I, I really don't believe it. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh, wow. Okay. The, the only one that keeps coming up to mind is, for me is a Michael Jackson song. Okay. You Are Not Alone. Let's hear it. And I keep, I keep reminding myself, You Are Not Alone. Um, you are not alone. Your burdens I will bear. Though we're far apart, always in my heart. You are not alone. Woo! <laughs> no formal training. I love it. Nice. Somebody pick up Tanya back there off the yeah, floor. It, no, it, just <laughs> it's So what are you working on now at this present time? Then? Okay, there's a movie that I co-wrote. It's called The Magical Mrs. Claus. Mm -hmm. Or it's I play one of the lead of again, military guy, yeah. right? So um but Basically, just to give you a little sum up on it, it's, you know, it's I leave this particular town for over 30 years, mm -hmm. and then I return back home, and and all this magical stuff starts happening. You know, I end up living with my aunt, and uh, come to find out, she happens to be Mrs. Claus. So Aww. there's a, there's a whole oh, nice, nice. It's, it's, it's a kid kid movie. Awesome. So and they're going to be pushing for it to go to Netflix, Blockbuster, mm -hmm. a Redbox, and Walmart for sale straight to DVD. It won't hit the theaters. Um, and then the other project as far as in, I'm still writing mm -hmm. other projects. I co-wrote another script called A Piece of Heaven with uh, Michael Cunningham. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I like to write just with the scripts that there's a lesson to be learned and mm -hmm. bibl biblical insight into it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, it's a hardship where this girl has to choose between pursuing her career as a violinist to join the New York Symphony or to stay back and actually help her parents out. Mm -hmm. you know? nice. So it's it's, trials and tribulations mm -hmm. and it's still reaching your goal and then there's another one that i wrote called another fallen star which is deals with two athletes one pursues a career of the nfl while the other one pursues a career of being a pastor oh so it's actually those it, are amazing it deals with the prodigal son the mm -hmm. returning the falling from grace and all that other stuff and then returns back to oh. his, his roots which is the church i love so. it that is beautiful absolutely because you know a, a lot of movies 
are, that are independent films are more like, you know, gang related and all that stuff like that. Right. So to know that there are some being made that's inspirational, you know, mm -hmm. and then has the biblical sense behind it, I really appreciate that. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Wow. Yeah, Thank it's going to be awesome, Thank especially you. the Christmas one. Well, yeah, it's this first one that I've ever, you know, <laughs> it's. I was asked, uh, matter of fact, the, the writer director, Mamie Jean Culvert, she's out of Elk Grove. She did, has lived in opera 30 years of her acting and so forth career in mm -hmm. LA and, and then moved up towards Elk Grove. I worked, you know, became friends and, you know, I, I, she's my mentor mm -hmm. as far as in with the writing and helping me with writing and so forth like that. So she calls me up one day, she goes, hey, I'm filming a project, mm -hmm. you know, would you like to uh, play the lead? Of course. I mean, <laughs> exactly. like, it was like, I don't have to audition? Yes. Okay, <laughs> great. You know? And then she says, well, there's only one side on the other side to it. And I go, what's that? You have to help me co-write it. Oh, okay. And which, I mean, that's, that's an honor. She already has three or four movies out. Mm -hmm. um, and she's dealt with several stars in LA and everything else. So I felt that it as an honor to actually be asked by mm -hmm. my mentor to write co-write a script with her. So. Right. The Ramonda Show, we promote women empowerment. Now I know there has to be some strong women in your life that you could talk about or you know give acknowledgement to at this time. Yes, of course, I'd like to acknowledge Mamie Jean Culvert, um, the mentor, mm -hmm. uh, my mother in New York, of course, and shout out to her, and <laughs> to New York. Um, Along the way, there has been, I can say, several actresses that have actually acted as sisters, and you know, throughout this, and actually, and it wasn't, you know, we're trying to start a relationship or anything. It's just realize uh, that we're good friends, mm -hmm. and that we can help each other and motivate each other through this, through this uh, hard times of being becoming an actor and getting established. Um, so. I mean, the list can go on and yeah. on. And I mean, in my brain, I'm trying to rattle all the names. You know, yeah. if it is to me, if I leave anyone out, then I don't want to offend them. Right. So that's the big right. key thing. And it's just they, they know who they are. Mm -hmm. um, and I couldn't be where I'm at right now if they didn't help. Because yeah. it's, you know, being a man, mm -hmm. yes, we want to relate to men and say, okay, show me how to be a man. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there's a side of us that needs to allow us to break the wall down to get to the emotional side mm -hmm. so we can understand women. So. Yeah. And writing movies, you need to be able to relate to men and women exactly. and children, not right. just men. So right. I don't write movies for men, right. just for men. I just write <laughs> movies for everyone. Well, so. Andres, you have a beautiful spirit. And I believe that if you keep God first, which I know you will, you will be successful. And we support you 100%. I hope to see many movies that you're going to be starring in, lead man in. <laughs> so please keep us posted on your career. Okay, we'll do. Thank you very much for having me. I Absolutely. Really appreciate it. Thank you. So I'm Ramonda Couture with The Ramonda Show. <laughs>